for black girl nerds. So much for your time. Uh, I've enjoyed you in so many roles, and this is another role, an opportunity to enjoy you. With uh, your character, you're playing uh, Frederick Douglass, and how would you describe his relationship between with him and uh, John Brown? Frederick Douglass and John Brown were, were friends in real life, um, which I did not know before I started working on this on this um, on this series, and um, that in and of itself is incredible. Uh, but the the way that they respected and loved each other is like pretty phenomenal um that when you start to read the letters that they were writing for us back and forth to each other the ways that they were they had very differing opinions on how to achieve the same goal of emancipation um and they are you know were both sort of brilliant thinkers who like this was their passion this is what they had dedicated their lives to but in very different ways so they had a lot of arguments but they also had an incredible amount of respect for each other and I think trying to figure out how to make sure that came through in the series was one of our best, you know, one of the one of the ch exciting challenges of it to have people who could love each other and be antagonists at the same time. Absolutely. That was particularly compelling to me as well, along with the fact that the story we're getting so much of the story from the vantage point of a younger person. How yeah. does telling a story that way, how does that conduit? act to advance the story differently as opposed to an adult character? I think it's so brilliant. Um, it's really like when you read the novel um, that James McBride wrote, it is such a brilliant convention um, because Onion is just a kid trying to, trying to grow up and be a teenager and do teenager things. And he's in the middle of a changing world and he's coming into contact with all these figures in history, but he doesn't know he's living through history. And he has no responsibility to that. So it allows someone like Frederick Douglass to be ridiculous mm -hmm. um, and to be human in a way that I think we don't often allow our heroes to be. Um, and so by using this lens of a young boy who has like none of our, all of our, we, all of us like approach history with, with a certain kind of reverence or a certain kind of standpoint, right? right. Of, of our particular vantage point. And it's, it's been developed over years and years of conditioning of, of this is what's important to know about this person's story. And Onion doesn't care about that. So you just get to see events unfold. And if Onion thinks they're ridiculous, they get to be ridiculous. And um, that was, I mean, that's why I said yes to the part, because if I was gonna play Frederick Douglass, I wanted it to be, I wanted us to be able to laugh also, I didn't, I didn't want to just have to acknowledge how brilliant his speeches are, which we do. They, it opens with the 4th of July speech, which I got to say, which is one of the greatest speeches ever written. Like, what an honor as an actor to get to perform that. And there's one great moment in it where he's giving this incredible, impassioned speech about what a lie, what a fallacy the, the idea of the 4th of July is of celebrating freedom in a country where many, many people are enslaved. And... Douglas looks over to a woman in the audience and winks at her because he's trying to get money from these women. He's out here hustling to raise money for, <laughs> the, for the cause of emancipation. And he'll use all of the tools in the toolbox. He will flirt with somebody to get money. Like, and, and women loved him. <laughs> you know, he's, he's the most famous man in the world. That's so right. it's a, I, I think getting to see all of the sides of the coin is really dope. I, and I had a great time trying to figure that out. It's cool. I mean, I can think of a perfect fit for a role like this than you. And we get these opportunities to see our historical figures, not so monolithic, to have a personality and be real people and living beings. How does this re-examining of our history now help us in our modern era to see these instances that are, are long forgotten since we don't get to see a lot of true abolitionist stories? Right, I, I mean, I think what one of the things that, that I really pull out of watching, of, out of like the totality of The Good Lord Burr when you watch the whole thing is that s there were a lot of people passionate about abolition and everybody was doing what they could. And a lot of like people, and some people couldn't do, Frederick Douglass couldn't do as much as John Brown could do. Frederick Douglass was not willing to die for it, but John Brown was. And so, and that's okay. W what comes to me when I see the totality of the thing is how everybody interacts with this story is people doing, when they believe in something, doing what they believe they are capable of doing. And we're, we're 
I think oftentimes we think that what we can do isn't enough. And so we don't do anything. Mm. Right. Um, and that's when I, I think the, sort of the powerful elements of this story is like, you know, when I watch it, it makes me feel like, well, I, I can't, I, I couldn't go to a march, but I could sign this petition online. And that's not nothing. Right. <laughs> me not doing it because I think it's not enough is nothing. Right. <laughs> but doing the piece of it that I can do, and the totality of those things is how you end up with a very small group of people figuring out how to take Harper's Ferry, the biggest, most powerful armory in the country at the time. And what they showed was that the Civil War would work. We wouldn't have had a civil war without this moment in history that none of us are taught about because it shows you that a civil war would work, right? And that's a dangerous thing for a country to teach you. So we bury this, this part of history and we say the civil war happened because Abraham Lincoln wanted to free the slaves and we put the power back in the government. But that's not why it happened. And one of the reasons that it happened was because John Brown and this ragtag band of like very few people showed you that it was possible if you actually wanted it to happen. Once the whole country saw that, you couldn't back away from it. Absolutely. I thank you for your part in bringing these parts of our history back to life. It's always a pleasure to speak with you and uh, have thank a wonderful you. day. You too. Thanks so much. Shake your booties for black girl nerds.